Retro gaming and CRT televisions, they just go together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Unless you don't like jelly, in which case there's more than one way to make a sandwich, just like there's more than one way to play retro video games. As much as retro gamers do love CRT TVs, I celebrate mine's birthdays. But as time goes on, enthusiasts of the hobby keep coming up with solutions or find ways to replace and or replicate some of the key features CRTs can offer. Perfect blacks can be found on OLED displays. Scan lines or the blank lines between scan lines are a feature included with almost any type of emulation. There's been projects for light guns that don't require CRTs to function. Measures have been made to reduce input lag. There's solutions for upscaling lower resolutions to modern displays. And while we're at it, a contribution of my own, check it out, the weight of a CRT TV without even needing a CRT. So with all these options to enjoy the benefits of CRTs without a CRT, it's a fair question to ask whether or not they get the job done well enough to make CRTs unnecessary. Now right off the bat you might be thinking that necessary seems like a pretty strong word but the reason I bring it up is because I have literally seen or heard this expression used countless times. I understand people giving their opinions, but in general, I'm not a big fan of saying that certain things are required unless they're actually, you know, required. If CRTs are necessary for retro gaming, then how come there's tons of people playing retro games without them and still having a lot of fun? So no, they're not necessary. Simple as that. I've always been of the opinion that part of what makes retro gaming so great is the wide variety of options people have to play them. Heck, I might even argue you don't need anything at all to play retro games. Check this out, daydreaming, playing Contra. That said, while CRT TVs aren't necessary for everyone to enjoy retro games, they might be necessary for some people. For example, me! So for this video, I wanted to go over some of the key features of CRTs as they pertain to retro gaming and just give you my thoughts on how they compare to the alternative solutions and why for me personally, CRTs are a must have. If you agree with me, then great. If you prefer the alternatives, then also great. Because the only agenda I have is for people to like retro games. Also teach your kids to love them. So first let's talk about that nice solid black color you get with a CRT. Have you ever been looking at your TV and thought, Boy, that is black. No? Well, neither did I, but now I do. Now that I'm aware of it, that is. It's something not everyone would necessarily think about, and even when they do, still not really care, as long as the black color is dark enough on screen. The benefit to me is the contrast that it provides. Whether you're looking for it or not, it does make the image look nicer overall. Though I should mention that it can vary by TV and on many CRTs, you do still get a bit of a blooming effect where light spills onto the edges of the black areas ever so slightly. When it comes to the pursuit of perfect blacks, this is one category where I actually think OLEDs have the edge. I had to pause a movie with a friend over one time just to admire them. Hey, my house, my rules. Because OLEDs can control each pixel, and in my opinion are much better at reducing light leakage, they provide better contrast. Of course, they're also much better at whooping your wallet's butt coming at a price. I couldn't buy one for the longest time because my wallet was actually hiding from me. Finally found it underneath the couch. The poor little thing scared to death. I mean, when's the last time you found a free working OLED TV out on the curb or in your grandma's basement? That said, the prices are only going to keep coming down and you might already have one anyway, since they're great for pretty much everything. 
everything. But then there's a matter of upscaling images. Modern TVs have upscalers built in that can upscale to varying degrees, but most people would suggest getting a dedicated upscaler of some sort and certainly if you're using original hardware. RetroTank is a popular one with varying levels of products you can purchase and money you can spend. These do a good job, but to me, I've always seen them as simply fixing a problem that playing on larger, modern TVs creates, which is that the lower resolutions of these older consoles don't match the higher resolutions of newer TVs. With the CRT, you can pretty much just plug any older console right into it and not worry about the resolution as it will be close enough. Naturally, some people will prefer the way older games look in higher resolutions if they can be displayed cleanly, which devices like the RetroTank can do, so that's going to be a preference call. For me, I lean towards CRTs because it feels like a more natural fit and a whole lot less bibbity bobbity booing going on. Not that that couldn't be seen as a cool thing, but a lot of this ties into the way both the scan lines look as well as the blank lines in between the scan lines, which technically are also scan lines, just scan lines left blank. A discussion that serves as pretty effective dork fight bait. Who wants to argue? But however you'd like to think of them, I personally like the way they look more on a CRT TV, though I should point out that some people aren't into the blank line effect at all, but not me, I like them. I've heard the image you get on a CRT described as providing a level of depth to the image, that gives a unique look, especially when you view them in real life, not just in my video here. To me, it doesn't look like the image sits as flat against the screen as it does with newer displays. Remember, the way CRTs display their image utilizes technology that is very different from how something like an OLED TV works. The images are simply going to look different. Upscaling aside, no matter what options are available to replicate them on newer displays. Some people might still like some of the options available for newer displays, might even like them a lot, but they are different, and where there's a difference, there's going to be the possibility of different preferences. I prefer CRTs. Okay, let's talk about light guns now, shall we? I really love this genre, and to me, nothing brings the arcade experience home quite like blasting a bunch of stuff on screen with a plastic weapon. Now, oftentimes you'll hear that CRTs are required in order to play these games, due to the way they work being designed around the way CRTs work, and the number of times somebody's tried to play Duck Hunt on an L. CD only to be denied have got to be countless. But as time has gone along, naturally people have come up with solutions to this issue. And no, not just daydreaming. Light guns that can be used on non-CRT displays. Really cool to see people actually make stuff like this a reality. But as of right now, to my understanding, most of these can't be used with original hardware and I prefer to use the light guns that were made for the consoles anyways. I'm an original hardware type of person, that's just how I am, and if you are as well, I'd say it's something to consider as it relates to light guns. Also, don't forget the Wii and other newer setups that don't require CRTs to play light gun style games. Next up, we've got input lag. CRTs get praised for having zero input lag, except for some of the late, late CRTs released that have some extra processing added in. How input lag should be defined has been debated, but if you were to define it as literal raw processing latency, then yeah, it's zero. However, if I were to define it in a way where most people actually understand what I'm talking about, I'd define it as the time it takes between pressing a button and what's supposed to happen on screen because you pressed that button, which should feel instantaneous, like a slap to the face. Quick little question for you. How many times were you playing games with others as a kid and somebody died only to yell at the screen, I pressed the button because they 
feel like the game had cheated them and not registered their input. Well, if it was back in the day, then that likely wasn't a valid excuse because they were playing on a CRT. However, with today's kids, maybe they actually did get cheated playing on a newer TV, especially if they didn't have game mode turned on, a mode that reduces input lag greatly in some cases. And there's a lot of TVs you can get nowadays that keep input lag to a very minimal level. Level. And I should also mention, you'll need to keep in mind the potential lag added by the devices you're using to play games as well. The main thing though is to just be aware there is a game mode and to actually activate it. It's not always on by default. I've actually taken up a little side hobby of cold calling random households to ask if their game mode is turned on. I don't call myself a hero, but if you did, I wouldn't stop you. Some folks are more sensitive about input lag than others, but my stance has always been this. You can reduce it enough that you should be fine to play even the most demanding of games. We're talking Turbo Tunnel, Battletoads, and Mike Tyson type scenarios. Here I am clearing the Turbo Tunnel, playing on an Xbox hooked up to an OLED TV, with game mode on. It feels darn near as responsive as a CRT to me. That said, even if the difference in lag is very small, I can still feel it during stress tests such as this. And I find myself feeling not quite as comfortable knowing that it would be even just the tiniest bit snappier on a CRT for the most dire of situations of which retro games have many. But again, that's just me. As you might have been able to piece together, a lot of it comes down to CRTs just feeling like a more natural option. Also, don't forget computer monitors as a low to no input lag option. The most unnatural thing I use are probably these SCART cables, which, while not as known in the US back in the day, these were still around in other parts of the world. I don't think that some of the more nostalgic, sentimental reasons can be entirely dismissed either. We're playing retro games, and what could feel more retro than having a 100 pound beast to display your games? Maybe playing on the floor? And who are we to argue what gives people their own personal enjoyment? That's what does the trick for them, then so be it. But. There you have it, my personal breakdown of how I evaluate the different potential benefits of CRTs compared to the alternatives and why I personally choose to play on a CRT. I'd like to remind everyone that we don't need to go to war in the comments. How you choose to play your games is completely valid regardless of who you convince. Which, as far as changing somebody's mind with angry online comments, I'm going on, yep, nearly my entire lifetime, never seen it happen. So, feel free to talk about why your setup brings you joy, and we can celebrate each other's passion for playing games in whichever way we do. Oh, and one last thing, typically in these CRT videos that I do, of which I'll leave the links to the others I've done in the description if you're interested, I up the ante each time by doing something with the CRT, but at this point, the only place to go up from here would be the hospital. And hospitalizing somebody is no way to spend a birthday. So with that, leave your comments down below and I will see you in the next video. He's the red bird, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the red bird.